Systemic Risk In today's world of high globalization and deeply interconnected financial markets, systemic risk is a very important issue. Many finance textbooks explain systemic risk in this way. It is a risk when one default leads to many other defaults. All those defaults then cause a selling spree. Therefore, asset prices drop dramatically and this effect then infects other distressed companies and maybe even other industries. Most of the focus here is typically on banks. This is because the topic gained prominence after the 2008 financial crisis when many banks had to be bailed out by governments. Some of you may have heard of this term, too big to fail. There is even a movie about it. In fact, there is a list of financial institutions which are called SIFIs, Systemically Important Financial Institutions. Regulatory bodies, such as the BIS, Bank of International Settlements in Switzerland, monitors them very closely because if there is a problem in just one of them, the consequences can be disastrous. That collapse can run very quickly through the entire economy and in extreme cases like the 2008 crisis, even the global economy. I will explain this concept in a little bit more details now using what I call a common sense approach. First, I want you to visualize a domino effect. What exactly is a domino effect? Well, it's when a particular event causes a chain reaction of the same event or other similar related events. Systemic risk is the financial equivalent of the domino effect. So it is the risk that if a particular company or a firm or an industry collapses and that collapse then triggers a chain reaction. The biggest danger is that the entire financial system may collapse. For example, if a bank collapses, all of its stakeholders are in trouble. Its capital providers, shareholders, depositors, everybody loses first hand. These are the direct immediate effects. But what happens to the other financial institutions? This single collapse or bankruptcy will scare other banks and their stakeholders their borrowers, their creditors, their bondholders. Everybody will rush to liquidate their positions to get their money back, to get some cash. As you know, whenever there is trouble, cash is king. Would it be okay if just one bank was unhealthy? The initial bank that collapsed, if that bank was unhealthy or a sick bank. The problem with a systemic or a system-wide risk is that it can also impact healthier institutions. In fact, not only just banks, other related industries such as insurance industry, mutual funds, leasing companies, non-banking financial institutions, and the other industries and sectors that they do business with may all lose out. And when this happens, it is just like contagion, just like the infection of a virus. This collapse can potentially infect everybody by transmitting to the entire financial system. Now there are several reasons why systemic risk is mostly mentioned in only banks context. Firstly, banks were the biggest losers in the global financial crisis. Secondly, it is because of the nature of their business. Think of this. What do bankers do? They borrow money with one hand and then give it out as a loan with another hand. That's called their intermediation role. So by definition, bank is highly leveraged. They literally do business with somebody else's money. Moreover, we saw from the global financial crisis that banks' liabilities were short-term and liquid, meaning the depositors deposited for a short time and wanted their money back quickly. On the other hand, the bank's assets were long and illiquid, meaning the banks loaned out their depositors' money on a long-term basis and could not easily call those loans back. As a result, they needed to constantly refinance. This made banks especially vulnerable to the systemic risk. Lastly, the order of the consequences of the systemic risk happen as follows. First, there is usually a fire sale in the distressed or collapsed bank or a financial institution or a firm. Investors rush to cash out their position. This fear then spreads to other similar firms or similar banks. Usually at this level, it is within the same industry. In a deeper contagion, however, 
the shock, spreads across multiple industries and entire economies possibly. Markets crash, investors' confidence is at an all-time low, and there may even be run on institutions. You could have seen some movies or pictures where people stand in very long queues, very long lines to take out all their money from the banks or in recent times from the ATM. That's the queue that you might be in level 3. Finally, hysteresis can occur. Now, hysteresis is a kind of a complicated term. It's a fancy way of saying that even after the problems disappear, the consequences of those problems, the sufferings of those problems do not disappear. What I mean is, long after the events which caused the entire contagion and systemic risk and collapse episode and the markets crash, investor confidence does not seem to return back to the normal position. Capitals cannot be easily raised, firms struggle to make new businesses or even persuade other people to invest in them. In other words, markets become frozen. This is a situation that economies, businesses do not want to be in. That's why systemic risk is such an important issue, especially today in this circumstance where we are struggling with the COVID crisis, but not in the same fashion that we experienced that during the 2008 crisis. We will talk more about this in later videos.